Hey there, I wanted to make a video response to a fake Sagan video, otherwise known as You've been hit by, you've been struck by a smooth terrorist. So he was making a video response to Gary, otherwise known as Inmendum, who I always end up calling Inmendham, and uh, I wanted to chime in on some things, so. He, he brings up the um, free speech free speech videos you know just all the go-to my cock was there stuff that that people like troll me with on a regular basis so i don't really have anything i think he also is threatened to kick my ass like okay what is he gonna like uh flip his head around and beat you up with his 80s rocker hair <laughs> um but there was one criticism that he made right at the outset which i will uh cop to which is that he said my the comment i left on his video was empty and just kind of a waste of time i agree um i i don't know what i was thinking when i left that comment honestly uh i i can't imagine that i thought you would actually take my advice as friendly advice or or re react favorably in any way um, I must not have thought that, but I didn't think you'd make a video either. I, I kind of thought you would see the comment and just go, eh, whatever, it's smooth terrorist being an asshole, and just go about your day, um, which you didn't. Um, but the point is, like, yeah, that, that comment isn't something that I, like, firmly stand by, um, but it stems from the fact that you triggered me. You triggered one of my pet pe You rustled my jimmies. When you say that, it's a reminder of how triggered is a valid concept. It is something that can happen to people on a legitimate level, and it's not this, oh, I got PTSD or anything like that. It's just people have triggers. Because the wonderful thing about triggers is... Uh, you pushed one of my buttons, which is that you, you, you a male, espoused feminist ideology in public. <laughs> I hate that. I really do. Um, and it's, it's hard for me to bite my tongue. Because for me, hearing a male espouse feminism, right? It's, it's like when you watch those old videos of Bobby Fischer talking about Jewish global conspiracy. Bobby Fischer was Jewish, by the way. So the, the point I'm making is, is, is like, it's, there's just something obscene about hearing a person espouse an ideology that is counter to their own interests, you know. Um, Whether it goes against one's own interest, I guess, would depend on what your idea of what the world should be, what the government should be, what lifestyle you think is the best for us to be living. Um, should we go with our nature? Should we go against our nature? A number of things like that. You know, um, a Chinese guy should be a Chinese nationalist. A, a Spanish guy should be a Spanish nationalist. A question that makes me ask is, where does that leave gay people? Should gay people only promote things that have to do with being gay? Um, and in fact, this is a really good say. This is a great segue because at the beginning of Gary's video, uh, one of the things he does is uh, uh, he, unrelated to me in any way. He rips on somebody else that left the comment, and all the person said is, "I'm British and I love the British royal family." And he gets pissed. It's like five minutes of, "Oh, you're the biggest retard ever." You know, can't you think of something better to spend money on than building palaces for silly people? Um, but the palaces aren't for the silly people that live in them. The, the palaces are for the Brits. Just like the silly people themselves are for the Brits. They're, they're a source of national pride. It's, it's their mascots, like you said. So why are you getting so upset? So how would you feel about gay people having a palace that looks like Elton John's head with the big, you know, frilly glasses or RuPaul in drag or something like that? Or, you know, a giant, a palace that looks like a giant pump or something. Looks like a pump, feels like a blowjob. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, 
for you to get that, for you to be calling this person a retard, like the biggest retard, uh, because they said I'm British and I like the British royal family. It's, a, it's like a, somebody saying I'm Mexican and I like sombreros. Um, you know, I'm, I'm Indian and I like sitar music. You, the, somebody takes pride in their culture. Wow. <laughs> it's, um, and, you know, he goes on to say uh, that, you know, why do you support tyrants? But I think all the tyranny took place long before the royals that we have today. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're just symbols. Um, It'd be hard to argue with that. But anyway, getting back to the original point, when I hear a man espouse feminist ideas, it's... I feel like I'm seeing, number one, somebody who's been intellectually hijacked. And two, I almost kind of see it as a poor reproductive strategy. Like, I, th I see white knighting as like a, a, a something guys do to get laid. I'm not necessarily saying I agree with you here, but I do have a question. Do you think it's conscious or subconscious? Um, you know, there's, there's this woman I work with. Very attractive, uh, a, a dime piece, if you will, and very liberal. And, and she's got a tattoo right here that says, no freedom till we're equal. Um, in other words, no freedom ever, because we're not equal. Um, and we'll never be equal. It's something we can strive for, but it's definitely something that we can never really achieve. That will never happen. So in that regard, I agree with you. But anyway. Uh, her boyfriend comes in sometimes, and th this guy is like the image of metrosexuality, right? Um, you know, like he, he wears pink shoes and skinny jeans and, you know, like, <sighs> I look at a guy like that, and I think the... He, he, it, it's just so hard to take. It's so hard to, 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 to bite your tongue and keep a straight face, because it's like... Now I'm wondering how old you are, because, I mean, did you miss the 1980s? Did it just kind of swoop past you? Did you Were you alive in the 80s? Because um, the 80s had some pretty outrageous styles, and they were what was in fashion. Now... Granted, right now, it's not that in fashion for men to be wearing pink shoes and skinny jeans. But there are a lot of styles that we sift through. A complaint I've had is that since the 1990s, uh, men are supposed to wear these super ultra baggy jeans. Uh, and if you wear shorts, they're supposed to look like baggy capris. I am not into capris. I don't like capris, but that's what men's shorts look like. Um, so, again, did, did you miss the 80s? Did it pass by you, or what? Or do you like to forget about that period? You are not going home and, and, uh, and, and reading feminist theory by yourself at the end of the day. Like, this is obviously a reproductive strategy. You're, you're obviously putting on an affectation to get this chick to sleep with you. You could be right about that, but my last comment was shoving forth that some people just like messing with fashion, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with them trying to get laid. But if it is, and they don't realize it, then, you know, that could be a subconscious thing, which goes into what I asked earlier. Do you think this stuff is conscious or subconscious? And maybe it works fine, but <laughs> uh, in that case, I guess it works. Um, for you, it won't work. Anyway, uh, so getting back to the point, um, yeah, it just bothers me to see that. Why does that bother you, though? I mean, I have the same question for people uh, several years ago, before big beards were a thing, when someone wanted to have a big beard, people would say the same thing about them. Because the way that it works is, and this has been studied, women tend to go for someone who is willing to stand out and yet be confident about the way that they stand out. 
these things that make someone stand out changes over the years. Is the thing that bothers you about the pink shoes and skinny jeans, is it the fact that it isn't very masculine? And I guess the question would be, why do you consider tight jeans to not be masculine? Why do you consider the color pink not masculine? Those types of things are a social construct. So why does it bother you that a guy could get laid by wearing skinny jeans and pink shoes? But I, I, I want to... You know, I haven't really addressed anything Gary said yet. I'm just explaining why I left the comment on his video in the first place. In case you wonder, Gary, that's it, you just hit a nerve. You just triggered me, that's all. You triggered me. Um, but there are some things in your video you want to say, that you said that I do want to take issue with because I see them as being represent, like a representation of, of larger societal trends that, that suck. Which is that you called me out for speaking about women as a category. You were like, oh, women aren't a category. They're, they're too varied. There's too many different kinds. You can't lump them all in. It's, yeah, I absolutely can. Women are a category, Gary. Did he mean it when he said that women can't be a category? Is there a figure of speech thing going on? Is there a semantical argument going on? Because... I mean, I'll, I'll completely agree with you on this, what you're saying right here is, I mean, anyone can be in a category. Anything that can be categorized is a category. <laughs> Women are a category, Gary, okay? Um, I can make broad sweeping generalizations about them and there's nothing wrong with that at all. I can say, for example, all women have two X chromosomes. And that is a true generality. Uh, there's no outliers hiding somewhere on the globe that, that are female yet have a Y chromosome. Okay, so so there are, a, like, women are a category. That, that They're a thing. And, it's, it, and it bothers me the way you've kind of espoused this idea throughout your video that gender is a social construct. Gender is not a social construct. I guess it depends on what you mean by gender. I mean, on this subject I struggle a bit too, but... There are things that we associate with being a man and being a woman that are not biological. There are some biological things, obviously, but there are some things that are not. There are some things that I mean, there are some things that are slightly biological, but then our culture increases those things by a tenfold. Society is a construct of people with genders. And, and it's, I, I see this thinking all the time, and it, talk about getting the cause and the effect reversed. You know, I, what I want to ask these feminists is, um, who foisted the, uh, the the patriarchy upon human beings in the first... Because you know, see, see, the patriarchy doesn't just hurt women, it hurts men too, right? Like, we created it, but it hurts us, because it, it pigeonholes us into a box, and then we feel like we have to act manly in order to conform to the societal expectation of the patriarchy, right? But who started it? Did a UFO come down at some point, and aliens say, okay, men, line up over here. Women, line up over here. Here's the way it's going to go. Here's your social contract. There you go. No. <laughs> these societal expectations, these gender roles, arose from the bottom up, not the top down, and they come from our biology. These things are how we survived as we evolved. Now my question, as I asked earlier, do we want to go with our instincts? Do we want to go with what is normally our nature, or do we want to go against that? There are some things that, if we go with our nature, are very destructive. There are other things that, if we go with our nature, are not destructive. So I guess it's an issue of measuring those things and lining it up with 
what our society is. They come from the fact that men and women have reproductive strategies which are diametrically opposed, right? A, a woman wants to seek one man, one stable provider, preferably an alpha male, um, and, and men want to just sow their seed as, as wide as possible. And, and uh, you know, that difference has led to different societal coping mechanisms, different, different cognition. We think differently. We are different. We have different priorities. If we are to go by the way that we have survived as a species, yes. If we are to go by the way that we are raised in the culture we live in, then the answer is not necessarily. Get your Sara Lee pound cake today. Um, you know, one of the things that that uh, that Gary says in this video that I recall because it's it jumped out at me is, is is he said, "What kind of woman are you talking about, a smooth terrorist? That or are you talking about?" the Betty Boop type woman? Or are you talking about the female physicist? Because those are very different things. Well, I don't think those are different things at all. Gary, those are two fictional characters. I haven't seen his video, but it's quite apparent that you have obviously strawmanned his argument here. Are, are you know, because he's mentioning things that are fictional characters, that doesn't mean that those kind of characters aren't some sort of archetype for different types of people. Because uh, there's no Betty Boop, and there's really no female physicists. <laughs> not not by the numbers. Um, y yeah, like, you, you can go out and find a, a, a Mulan somewhere, right? Is that the name of that movie with the woman that pretends to be the samurai, cuts her hair so she looks like a guy? Are you pretending to be a woman because you have long hair? Um, you know, and, 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 and am I suggesting that female physicists are pretending to be men? Yeah, I am. I understand that the majority of people fall into the categories that, you know, if, if you're a woman, you're naturally going to fall into these categories most of the time. If you're a man, you're going to naturally fall into these categories most of the time. But not everybody does. Um, you know, I, I, like we've already gotten to a point where men are underrepresented at the university level. Um, what are, what are we going to do when the bridges and skyscrapers just start falling down around us? Because <laughs> uh, it's it, that's that's definitely coming. What so you think that if people who aren't normally in certain fields or wouldn't naturally be in certain fields are doing things that are so refined that they have to be done according to exact standards, they're going to veer from those standards because they're women. Come on now, even if one goes to extremes in the mindsets that you seem to be representing, that's really a silly thing to say. Um, you know, li liberal arts degrees and, and, and women with science degrees aren't, aren't going to keep the wheels turning. Again, as I said, even if we go to the extremes of the mindset you seem to be representing, it's a silly thing to say because most of these fields are so refined, there's almost no way to make a mistake because you have to follow a set of guidelines. And a lot of these things are tested with, com with computer models. I mean, come on. You're being silly here, seriously. Very long. Um, I think at some point, some horrible chauvinist uh, bigot is, is going to have to stand up and say, you know what, there's a difference between men and women. Um, your place is in the home with the children, dear. Let me go build some shit. If our society falls apart, if our government falls apart, and we're left fending for ourselves as individuals, 
then yes, we will probably go back to a hunter and gatherer kind of mindset. And in that regard, the things that you're saying could be true. But as long as we have the society we live in, as long as we have the culture we live in, these things are not true. Um, and if you look at the origins of feminist theory, I mean, let, let, let's talk about let's talk about feminism itself. Let's talk about the movement. Um, you know what what comes to mind, or what should come to mind for most people, is the original feminists, the suffragettes, the British suffragettes that that got the right to vote. Um, a lot of their tactics have been whitewashed by history. Like, everybody remembers the hunger strike. All oh, those poor women starved themselves in jail because those mean men wouldn't give them the right to vote. Yeah, they also burned down churches at night, beat doctors with rhino whips in the street. Um, they, they were terrorists. They were essentially fucking terrorists. They, they, they were like ISIS. Um, and really, they should have been killed. I've never read that anywhere, but if that was the case then those who committed those acts should have been punished. And if the punishment for that sort of thing was death at the time, then yes. But my view of a government is something that should be working for the people. It should be representing the people. To me, we should have had the right to vote. Everyone should have had the right to vote from the very start. It's supposed to be for the people, and the people should be including everyone. There you go. Um, we should have ended it right there. We shouldn't have given chicks the right to vote, which they didn't earn the, the way men had to earn for, for ourselves through through bloodshed. And, and so, like, we, we had to win the right to vote on the battlefield. We, nobody handed it to us. It's, it's not like the king said, hey, guys, let's have a parliamentary system. You all seem like great folks. Would you like to determine your lives a little bit? No. If you take the United States as an example, the United States was not founded as a monarchy. The United States was founded to be representing the people. Um, and I don't think a hunger strike would have worked for us. Uh, you know, at, at some point, a, a couple of uppity chicks, a couple of crazy females started whining because they wanted to be men. They wanted to be represented. I don't get how the idea of wanting the right to vote is wanting to be a man. You're not making any sense, dude. <laughs> and we handed them the vote, um, which is crazy, because because now, you know, and, and if you don't think that's crazy, Gary, I mean, like, you, you and I are both men, okay? So I know that when you turned 18 years old, you had to sign up for something called selective services. Now, all the women in the audience are scratching their heads. They don't even know what the fuck that is, Gary, but you do, don't you? Um, yeah, that's, that's that fun lottery system where you might just get picked to sacrifice your life for the country. There are many out there, including myself, who think that we shouldn't have to sign that sort of thing, that nobody should have to sign that sort of thing, that the military should be completely voluntary. And what's funny is... You're mentioning something that has to do with the United States, and just a little bit earlier, you were addressing things as if we were living in a monarchy. We are not living in a, under a monarchy. We're living in a republic where the people get to vote. Now, when it comes to the larger things, we get to vote for people who vote, but at least we still get to vote. We might just... Oh, yeah. Um, you'll be precluded from any kind of student aid if you don't register. You can never get an education. You can never get a government job. You can never run for public office unless you sign this paper that says, we might just ask for your life. Not necessarily, but we might at some point ask you to die. And I'm betting that nowhere in this video are you going to speak against anyone having to do that sort of thing? Where is a... And you can't vote without doing that, by the way. Did I mention that? If you don't sign up for the draft, you cannot vote. Okay. But a woman who turns 18, 
she just gets, you know, she gets to vote. She doesn't have to register for the draft. Well, what is a vote? What does a vote do? It's power. It's exercising. It's a, it's deciding whether or not the country goes to war. Whether that decision is is like some kind of direct democracy. Let's put it to a vote, or you're electing a representative who's either going to be a, a pacifist or a warlike person, right? Um, so, for example, let's say all the women get together and vote in uh, a total war hawk. Like, like we get we, we get another Bush presidency, right? Now men are dying based on the decision of women. Based on the decision of both men and women. We don't live in some sort of vacuum where only women get to vote. Both men and women get to vote. Who have no similar expectation of, of uh, civic responsibility and sacrifice. They get to sit on their fucking asses. So do you actually agree with the draft? Do you think men should have to sign up for the draft? and make decisions. That's bullshit, Gary. To me, the idea that anyone should have to sign up for the draft is bullshit. Um, you know, and, and, and some people are thinking this is a weird rant, like, why are you going off on suffrage and the women's right to vote? Like, where is this coming from? Because if you want to talk about feminism, you gotta go to the source. You gotta, you gotta, this is where it should have been nipped in the bud. We never should have gotten the third wave campus feminism. It should have, it should have ended in England with the Women's Social and Political Union. These chicks should have been fucking strung up by the neck and killed. What should have happened is we should have abolished the draft and given everyone the right to vote. Pure and simple. Um, that's really as, as simple as it is. They, they were terrorists, they were criminals, they should have been treated as such. And the reason that they were given pity is because that's what men do. We protect women. That's what we're programmed to do. And that's one of the most interesting things about suffrage is if you look at when the, the right to vote finally came, it didn't come because of the hunger strikes, it didn't even come because of the church burnings. It came because more women wanted it than the ones that did it. When when the when the suffragettes and and the, the whack job feminists couldn't get the mainstream English woman on their side, then policymakers said, "Ah, fuck it. You know these these are crazies. We're not going to capitulate." But when that tipping point of you know over fifty percent, now they're on the side of the the uh, women's social and political union, then all of a sudden policymakers say, "Hey, oh well." Girls want to vote. Here you go. Here you go on a silver platter, ladies. There you go. Send me to die. Okay, if this really is your argument, then should slaves have been freed without them having to do something significant in order to be freed? Because if you want to break apart slavery, the people who were originally slaves, not not the children of those who were slaves, but the ones who were originally slaves and were brought over to here, were slaves for a reason. Should they have been able to just, oh, well, you're free, or should they have had to have paid somehow, done something very specific, or done something, again, very significant in order to not be slaves? I mean, the same kind of argument can be made that way as what you're saying about women being able to vote. How far down the rabbit hole do you go in this area? Send me off to die. Here you go. Here's the vote. <laughs> it never should have happened. It never should have happened. Um, and Western culture has been sliding into oblivion ever since. It's just been a steady decline of degeneracy spinning into this nihilistic nadir of, of uh, I'm, I'm running out of uh, 10 cent words here, Gary, but the, the, the point is... This just seems like a giant blame game to me. There are many things that people can point to and see, see, this is when we had the decline. Oh, see, this is when we had the decline. 
Why are you specifically going towards women being able to vote without signing up for the draft? Why are you not arguing that men shouldn't have to sign up for the draft either? Where is this coming from? What is your conclusion? What do you think can help this? Feminism in 20... It's the current year, Gary. It's 2016. Uh, that's not cool anymore. <laughs> um, get with the times. But really, I've, I've never... I, I mean, I, I want to state for the record I've hated feminists before it was cool because um, when I started making YouTube videos in 2006 it was, the whole MRA thing wasn't really a thing yet there was no Gamergate uh, you were still very much um, poo-pooed for for not towing the feminist line which I did not I didn't like them then I don't like them now um, and anyway, so there we go. Um, so, so most of Gary's video is is him basically saying that there's no difference between men and women. Women aren't a thing; they don't exist. They do. They are a thing. They're different. They're weaker, um, physically, emotionally, and mentally. Physically is the only one that I'll agree with you here. Emotionally, that's debatable. Mentally, that's debatable. Their purpose is to create new humans. They're a reproductive resource. Men, on the other hand, um, are expendable seed pods, which uh, violently compete with one another, usually uh, it's sometimes to the point of death, uh, for the right to inseminate that reproductive... Re We're all objects, Gary. And, and, and that's the point I want to make. We are objects, yes. We are animals, yes. We do have patterns, yes. But society can make our lives more fulfilling. For ourselves, for other people. Now, that is going against our nature. But not everything that's natural is better. And that can be brought across a number of different subjects. You know this. I mean, it's like the people who, I mean, let's kind of take this in a slightly different place for just a moment. Um, there are people who try to argue, oh, chemicals are bad, man-made chemicals are bad. And then they'll, they'll preach that everything natural is better. It's like, um, this is deadly, this is deadly, this is deadly, and this is deadly. Not everything natural is better. Because another thing you brought up in your video is is this notion of a female objectification. Men objectify females as sex objects. Oh, all he wants me for is sex. Well, that's a two-way street, and, and it's time we started addressing that. Um, you know, for a woman to ask a man on a first date, So what do you do? That, that's the same as me saying, do you like it in the ass? Do you like to give head? Um, I'm basically saying that's all I'm interested in. That's all I care about is what can I get from you? I'm not interested in who you are as a person, right? Because when, when a girl says, what do you do? It, it's like, should I just take out my wallet? And would you two like to be alone together? Would you like to be alone with my wallet? And I can just, I, I can just go powder my nose in the bathroom uh, while you guys have a nice dinner. Um, you know. And it, that's always been the case. Uh, there's there's always been a sexual marketplace, and all of us have value in that market, whether we want to admit it or not. A man's value is as a success object. I can't argue with what you're saying there. It's one of the many reasons why I still haven't attempted to be with women. I am a 4.5 on the Kinsey, basically meaning I'm mostly gay. But I've never attempted to be with a woman because I, I'm not into playing that kind of game. Whereas a female's value is a, a sex object. And really, I think we got the short end of the stick because at least women are being desired for an intrinsic quality of themselves. Like, if, if you're attractive yesterday, you're going to be attractive tomorrow. Generally, that's true. But if you have standards, certain types of appearances that you have a preference towards, and someone radically changes their appearance, 
they may not be as attractive to you. But, I mean, again, I mean, in general, what you said is true, though. Um, whereas, you know, if you're getting laid because you've got the great job and the social status and all the friends and the nice car, you can lose all those things at a moment's notice. And people do. Um, so men got the short end of the stick when it comes to objectification. And I don't want to hear any whining from chicks about having to shave their armpits or, or you know, suck it up, ladies. You've got it easy. And, and most of the things that feminists say are... Uh, <laughs> Are, are, are like the patriarchy's crimes against women are really benevolence uh, you know owning money and property is dangerous people kill you to, to take those things away the right to vote is is dangerous um, you know as, as these Trump rallies demonstrate getting involved in politics often results in an ass-kicking Gary's hair um, what else? Uh, women weren't allowed to operate motor vehicles. Well, that's a no-brainer. It's fucking dangerous. I might be able to give slight credence to what you're saying here if there were statistics showing that men make better drivers than women. Women take less chances. Men take more chances. Now, these things sort of balance themselves out what in the statistics I've seen. Now, if women were to take as many chances when driving as men, then maybe they wouldn't do as well. But between those things, I mean, it all equals out. So, yes, it's dangerous, but that doesn't mean that women are not as good of drivers. It depends on how you look at it. <laughs> How many? I mean, what is that like the second? Or no, no, I think the automobile accidents are the first leading cause of unnatural death, and it would be heart disease for the leading cause of natural death, right? Um, so most of the things that men, swaggering macho men, have, have like precluded women from participating in are inherently dangerous. That we're owning the shitty stuff. We're saying, yeah. <laughs> in this country, we have a shitty public transportation system. You, you have to be in some very specific cities to have a decent public transportation system. Without the ability to drive, you don't really have freedom. That is the way things work in this country. So I hope you're considering that when you're saying this stuff. I'm, I, I'm the proud samurai that, that, that has the warrior ethos and, and I'll, I'll do that, honey. Well, yeah, because because you're gonna die. You're the expendable half, and she gets to sit at home, in in comfort. <laughs> the way things are financially, in most relationships, both people have to work anymore. Um, and 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 vacuum the carpet in in pearls and a, a high heels, I suppose. Um, you know, I I think a lot of people would would prefer that. Uh, that life. I think that's the reason why the suicide rate is six times higher for males than female children upon reaching the age at which gender differences become apparent, because kids are realizing they're getting screwed. It's, it's like a little boy realizes, I'm not just a human, I'm a, I'm a type of human called a boy. And, uh, you know, I have to compete with all these other boys to be good enough for her, and, and she doesn't really have to do anything at all, except be lucky enough to have been born attractive. Yeah, fuck this. <laughs> and that's happening. Every day. Every minute of every day. Uh, by the statistics. Um, I think it's also the reason why we have transgender people, um, which are not an invention of Western society. Um, they, there have been transgender people in every epoch in every place in the world, um, and most of them tend to be male to female and not female to male. Why? Who wouldn't want to live a life of 
being a object of desire that doesn't ever have to do anything dangerous or scary or compete or or hide their emotions. <laughs> being a man sucks. Um, man, that's harsh. That's so fucking harsh. Um, but this goes back again into one of these arguments of is it conscious or is it subconscious? Are these things that people want to be or believe they are, is it conscious or subconscious? You know, if gay is being a, is a choice somehow, I don't believe it's a conscious choice. I think it would be a subconscious choice. And some of this could be for some of these same reasons you're mentioning, if it is that. And when it comes to trans issues, I have a feeling that if we were to blur the gender roles more than they are now, less people would feel... Uh, less people would have body dysphoria, less people would feel that they really should be the opposite sex. Now, I, I want to make it clear for those that are watching this, um, I still think, as long as nobody is causing other people harm, then what fucking difference does it make? I'm going to call people whatever gender they wish to be called, whatever pronouns they wish to be called. But I do often think about what are some of the reasons for this stuff. There are... Um, there are other animals who show these sorts of things. It's rare, but there are other animals that show this. But to me, as things progress, I think more people are going to come out as trans. More people are going to want to come out as non-binary. Um, just because we're being made more aware of different things in our society. Um, and I, I know that what I'm saying is pretty harsh too, but um, anyway, uh, back to the video and back to actually responding and not going off on a tangent. Nevertheless, you know, you got to take what you're given in, you, in this life. And I, I think if, if you're cutting things off of your body, you, you have a mental illness. Because, because, by the way, if anybody's wondering, I was kind of a wave for the whole Caitlyn Jenner thing. Yeah, mental illness. Um. I'm not ready to jump up and say it's a mental illness. I will say that I think, for the most part, it is a product of our society. It is a product of seeing the reality of what we are. I'm a big supporter of the gay community, always have been, always will be. No problem with the gays. Transgenders are fucking nuts. Um, if you want to suck a dick, suck a dick. Be gay. You don't have to change your your physiology. You don't have to cut things off. You don't have to risk infection. And 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 what you, you know? I think I read somewhere that that uh oh some statistic. What was the statistic about hospital errors? Because it's one of those things they put on the mainstream news to scare people. But I'm sure it's true. Like, uh, 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 medical errors are, are like 40% of all deaths that occur in, in a hospital now. So, you're really taking a big risk by getting gender reassignment surgery, and, and I would say it's an unnecessary risk. And all these people tend, by the numbers, to end up committing suicide anyway, probably because they come to their senses and realize, oh my god, I've mutilated myself, what do I do now? I wouldn't say that's the reason. I'd say it's more of someone saying to themselves, I really can't be what I really wish I was. I, suddenly I want to fuck a girl. Oops. <laughs> um, you know. Wow. This... This is a good video. No, I'm not gonna delete this one. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's let him... <laughs> let's let him, uh, let him chew on this one. <laughs> Chewing enjoyment goes on and on. Wrigley Spearman is pure chewing satisfaction.
Maybe my uh, Encyclopedia Dramatica article can get a little bit longer once I, uh, once I upload this. Yeah. So, anyway, Gary. Gender's not a social construct. Uh, women are different than men. Not superior, different. But you said that men can do math and science and girls can't. Doesn't make you superior. Where is this superior and fit? What was it Einstein said that a a, a a fish will will spend its whole life thinking that it's stupid if if you judge its uh, intelligence by its ability to climb a tree, right? Um, <laughs> just like I suck at math too. Um, does that mean I'm a stupid person? I don't think so. We all have different strengths. We all have different weaknesses. And a woman's strength... Um, a woman's strength has and always has been manipulation. I, mean, like, I, I just don't believe that, that women are this underprivileged class. I, I think they've always had equal, if not more, power than their male counterparts, but it's a power that's more difficult to see. It's the power of manipulation. I would say that's the power of femininity. The power of masculinity is quite different. Power of masculinity is more direct. It's, it's easy to see the power of a swaggering male walking around with a war club in his hand and a crown on his head. But it's harder to see the power of the woman that's whispering in that in that guy's ear. Hey, I don't like that guy. Kill that motherfucker. You know that's power. That's power. That's what makes nations rise and fall. And um, you know, so there's this whole thing that that women have been <laughs> that over over fifty percent of the human population has been the oppressed half for all of human history and, and just in the past few hundred years are they starting to come into their own and... I guess it would depend on what you mean by oppressed to me not having full freedoms is a form of oppression women have been told no you need to take a back seat to this no you can't do that no you can't do this no, you're not allowed to have any direct power. Everything has to be about manipulation. I would call that a form of oppression. Um, maybe you wouldn't, but I would. Now, for the most part, women have those freedoms. But for a whole bunch of them, it's like, well, that's not good enough. Now, if, if we're not as good at something, we want to be treated as if we are as good at something. You know, a sort of a form of affirmative action uh, between uh, sexes. And I think that's kind of messed up. Yeah. I am self, I am unselfconscious enough to post this video on the internet. I really am. I'm, I'm pulling the trigger, guys. I'm, I'm doing it. It's going up. <laughs> um, get back in the kitchen, ladies. That's not necessary, but I do think we need to look at things more realistically.